Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channel's Television. I'm Melissa Antwonwoka on the news this hour. Prominent Nigerians continue to reflect on Nigeria's 59-year voyage as presidential candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Abga, in the 2019 general elections, joins us to examine the highs and the lows. Amidst intense horse trading and power play ahead of the 2023 presidency, Nigeria's vice president finally breaks silence on what he describes as defamatory assertions and peddling of falsehoods as he threatens to waive his immunity to allow for proper adjudication. And finally, Nigerian Senate confirms receipt of draft of medium-term expenditure framework 2020-2022. What does this mean for the common man? Welcome everyone to the program. Now, prominent Nigerians have continued to reflect on Nigeria's 59-year voyage after it was declared independent from the British Crown. As Nigerians savour the mood of the independence, which is barely well, four days away, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Abga, in the 2019 general elections, General John Agbo, joins us from our Buja studio as we examine uh, the last 59 years. We'd like to thank you for joining us on the program. Um, and first, uh, start by asking what your view of Nigeria is as we clock 59 on Tuesday. Good, good afternoon. Uh, I didn't hear you very well, please. Okay. My first question is, what's your view of Nigeria, the Nigerian project, as we clock 59 come October 1st? Well, Nigeria so far... Um, has not been doing pretty well since we got to our independence in 1960. Uh, we have had a series of challenges. We had a civil war. We have uh, a youth uprising in the Niger Delta. We have uh, Boko Haram. We have uh, all kinds of uh, security challenges that have uh, led to the death of many Nigerians, millions of Nigerians, which is very unfortunate. Uh, we could have avoided these things, but probably we started on the wrong footing until we get back and do the correct thing, uh, go back to the drawing board. I don't think uh, we will have it right, because this nation as was given to us by the British. Uh, they were not honest with us. They did not set up. The, the nation, the way that we could take it and say it's a nation. And when they called us for independence, we accepted it at our own peril. Until we sit down and recreate this country according to what we want us to be as a nation, we will never have it right. There's also a view um, that you've held in the past where you said that we were loosely put together by the British, ended up in a political crisis that led us to uh, a civil war. You also said that um, under President Buhari, Nigeria is divided more than it has ever been. Um, is that a view that you still hold? Well, Nigeria is divided. It's not just under President Muhammad Buhari that, that it started. These are the things that started, as I said, from 1960. When we got it wrong, uh, we will never get it right until we, we sit down, go back to the drawing table, and uh, look at ourselves, look at the different components of the Nigerian society. Sit down as Americans did in Philadelphia some uh, almost 2,000 years ago, over, uh, almost uh, 200 years ago, until we sit down and decide what type of Nigeria do we want to have, and come out with a constitution that will embrace all of us. And uh, then each of us, or all, all the various components of the Nigerian society, will decide how we coexist with one another. Then these problems will go. Uh, under President Muhammad Buhari, we, have, we had 
even before Buhari came in, we have had challenges under President uh, Jonathan. And then we're still having uh, Boko Haram and uh, other challenges, bandits, mandistry, in, in the northern parts of the country and, and kidnapping all over the country. But after President Muhammad Buhari, this is not going to stop until we as Nigerians decide what to do with, what to do with our country. It may be worse under, uh, after Buhari because each time uh, things get worse every year. You mentioned restructuring. So it's not just... Uh, you mentioned restructuring. Huh? Would you say that that is the solution? Some people disagree uh, that restructuring is the solution to, to the problem. Well, when people talk about restructuring, it depends uh, what they mean. Uh, my own type of restructuring I, uh, I do advocate is to uh, allow each federating unit, the states, to prospect their, their, their uh, natural resources and uh, take care of their, their youth, their women, uh, and uh, their education. And uh, the federal government should uh, reduce the uh, number of uh, ministries that it handles. And the federal government can handle defense, uh, can handle uh, foreign affairs, uh, they can handle the currency, and so forth. But much of the country should be run by the federating units. And then the money generated should be uh, at the state level. Should, part of it should be forwarded, should be sent to the federal government, and much of it should be left at the federating units to, uh, to take care of the teaming youth in the various parts of the country. So that's your suggestion, but do you think that, uh, do you see this happening in the nearest future? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think the, the present administration has, uh, has it on, on its agenda to uh, bring about restructuring on, of Nigeria. But as I said, uh, Mao restructuring is fiscal restructuring is uh, I build, I don't want us to go back to the states. I mean, to, uh, go back to the to the regions which the British gave us, and the reason the reason we are having these challenges is because the British gave us uh, regions mainly to divide us. The, in the first place, the British were not ready for us to be a nation when in the 1920s and 1930s. The uh, educated Nigerians, some of them were drivers, some of them were uh, uh, I mean, artisans and so forth, and cooks. They, as, they, as they moved all over the country and, and met Nigerians and discovered that Nigerians are very, very friendly people, they asked the British to give them a nation, to, to make Nigeria a nation for them. But unfortunately, uh, the then British uh, 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 governor general at that time Sir so Hugh Clifford uh, was very angry. He went to the, uh, to the then uh, Congress, uh, made up of only mostly foreigners, and uh, told Nigerians to forget about being a nation. Nigeria will never be a nation, and the idea of Nigerian nation is inconceivable and dangerous, and therefore, we should never think about being a nation. Then in, on April, uh, April 6th, on April 6, uh, uh, 1942, the uh, um, West African Student Union, led by uh, a gentleman, a barrister from uh, Abeokuta, uh, uh, barrister Oladipo Solanke, made a plea to the British government to give us a nation with a kind of a constitution, or the American kind of constitution, or Swiss kind of con constitution. But at the same time, the British will make sure that the loyalty of Nigerians is to the Nigerian nation, not to the tribe. The British brought us up to hate ourselves, to love, to be loyal to our own ethnic groups. And then uh, uh, from ethnic group uh, to think about what to do with Nigeria. All right. So Nigerians by nature will be brought up to, 
to be ethnic, to be tribal. Well, I don't well, use I know, the word tribal because of people tribal means, would, the word tribe means... I know a number of people who disagree with you, but um, we'd like to thank you for joining us. That's, that's the much we can take at this time. Many thanks, retired Army um, Officer Major General John Moore. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, the Vice President, Professor Yemoshi Bajoa, is talking tough and he says he's ready to waive his constitutional immunity to enable the most robust adjudication of what he describes as several basis allegations, insinuations and falsehoods against his person and office. The Vice President made this declaration in a social media message on his verified Twitter account. In one of the tweets, the Vice President says... In the past few days, a spate of reckless and malicious falsehoods have been peddled in the media against me by a group of malicious individuals. The defamatory and misleading assertions invented by this clique had mostly been making the social media rounds anonymously. He went on to say that he has instructed the commencement of legal action against two individuals, one Timmy Frank and another Kat Jew for allegedly putting their names uh, to some of the publications.